All right, so now the next page, biostratigraphy and correlation. So this is really important here where we're look at rock units and compare them from one area to another because no place on earth has a complete record of rocks because we see erosions, we see some conformities, tectonic events. Uh, rocks are uplifted to high altitudes, high elevation. There's no deposition up there. There's only erosion, right? So there's no record. You know, the, the, the deposition has to occur in a basin, right? So, um, and there's two ways that we look at it. We look at it with this lithostratic correlation, which means we're just comparing the rock units with no reference to their ages. This is the better one here, biostratic, because that's that's telling us something about time. We, we can have fossils of certain ages to, that we can correlate across ocean basins, across wide regions, right? And then this will help us um, determine whether a unit may be time transgressive. For example, uh, uh, if, if sea level is rising, you, your beach environment is going to change. But during that whole time, in fact, I think I have it over here, yeah. So you can see that, so here we have a, a sand environment here. Well, in fact, let's do sea level rise in here. So this would be a marine transgression where sea level rises. So at this time A, we have sand forming here, but then as sea level rises, sand starts to form at a little bit higher up on the continent. Then as sea level rises more, sand forms even higher. So this would be a, so see we have these timelines. So this sandstone is time transgressive. It spans this time, this time, and that time. So that's what I mean about time transgressive. It's spanning more than one time. So in other words, even though this sandstone would, would correlate litho, lithostratigraphically, the same lithology, same rock, rock type. Remember, lith means stone, the same stone. The ages would all be different, right? Ages, so there'd be different fossils in them, right? So that's the idea about this time transgressive. So this figure kind of shows the, the marine regression and the marine transgression. The other important, important part here, I talk about these, these uh, facies, uh, the uh, sedimentary facies here. So remember, facies is a, is a group of pat, a group or, or a packet of minerals or rocks that give information about an environment. In this case, uh, for sedimentary rocks, is it a, a marine environment? Is it deep marine, shallow marine? Is it a shoreline? Or it could be, uh, for example, conglomerate. Conglomerates are going to be river channels. That's so the faces, conglomerate faces are river channels. Lots of energy, lots of boulders being moved by the, by the, uh, the water, right? The energy of the water. And so you can see here, I have some, uh, um, some different types of faces or environments and what type of rocks you'd find there, right? So in this exercise, it refers to figure 18, which is on the next page over here. But um, they're, fine. they're mapping siltstones, shales, limestones, all kinds of different uh, rock units. And each of these is a facies. For example, limestones is telling me that it's going to be either deep marine, uh, maybe outer shelf, right? So, you know, a little bit deeper waters. So it's telling us that there's um, uh, uh, a certain environment going on there. And then uh, if we look at figure 18 here, which is down over here, we want to examine what's going on here. So you can see that conglomerate, it's like this is, in fact, you can, I don't know if you can make that up, but th this is a conglomerate here. And um, if we examine the two sections uh, for similar sequences of rock types and environments uh, and indicate sea level changes, yeah, uh, were environments indicated by sedimentary rocks the same? Well, in both places. So uh, this is western sequence and this is eastern sequence. They're separated by 250 miles there. And you can see that in the in the Western sequence, we see more limestones. We do see the conglomerate, and we do see um, conglomerates on both sides. We do see sandstones on both sides. So uh, yes, we'll say yes, both, or, or we'll say uh, yes, uh, marine and terrestrial. And the reason I say terrestrial, well, the, the conglomerate, that's a river, right? That's going to be a terrestrial or land um, environments. Was deposition continuous in both areas, or is there evidence of unconformity? So, and there is evidence of unconformity. So it wasn't continuous. There, there was erosion, right? There is, and so what is evidence? Well, remember the, the, the facies, right? For something to be continuous, I should see limestone, shale, sandstone. 
right? So in other words, sandstone should never be next to limestone because you have to have shale in between. Um, and remember, conglomerate would be, you know, even above the sandstone, right? So the fact, like in this one, the fact that I see conglomerate, a river deposit on limestone over here, this is definitely an erosion because limestones form in deeper waters, marine waters, conglomerate forms on land in river channels. So there's something's happening there. There's, I should see shale and sandstone in between there, but it's missing. So they've been eroded away. Same thing here. Um, I see conglomerate on top of shale. I should see sand in here. We're missing the sand, you know. I put sand. Where is that sand? It's missing. Now, um, so that's just a couple of examples. Uh, we can go, let's see where else we got. Um, here we got conglomerate. So we're missing sand here. There should be sand on top of the conglomerate. That would be the beach environment. Because remember, siltstone's a little bit, uh, shale's a little bit deeper water there, right? So again, we're seeing uh, these unconformities. So uh, we see terrestrial uh, uh, river cobbles, and those river cobbles are the conglomerates on limestone. That's a good piece of evidence. So that's telling you right away, you can, that cannot happen, that doesn't happen, um, that doesn't happen normally. You need to have some erosion event to, to have the conglomerate on top of the limestone there. All right, so for letter C, suggest correlations between units. So if you were just looking at these uh, and you wanted to correlate them, we're going to do a, a, a lithostratigraphic, right? So remember, lithostratigraphic is just comparing the rocks. And kind of the, the easy one here is one that I see, I see conglomerates right here and right here, right? So that makes sense. I can correlate those two, right? Um, and then uh, I see that there's some sandstone here, some limestone. So I really, I don't know where this would fit, but these would correlate. Maybe these down here would, could correlate pretty well there. Uh, maybe that sandstone correlates with this sandstone here. Maybe the deeper waters had some siltstone, right? So you can see I can try to correlate what's going on there. And that's just based on lithostratigraphy, right? The next page, they found some fossils, right? So they're saying some paleontologists found some Elraphia fossils, which are Cambrian. And that's going to make our, our, you know, we're going to draw new lines here. So now we know, okay, well, let's zoom out a little bit here. We know that this limestone must correlate with each other. So we'll take the top of this limestone in, air, in the eastern sequence and correlate with the top of that limestone in the western sequence. So this is a time boundary, right? And we see that our conglomerates are totally different ages, right? So we were totally wrong in that previous exercise, right? But now we know, right? So um, why does the presence of index fossil Elraphia make correlation more accurate, right? And really the thing is, is we, uh, we use um, biostratigraphy. And that would be more accurate of, of comparing times, right? So we have a, a time correlation rather than something that's maybe time transgressive, right? So anyways, that's a little bit on, on we'll be doing more. There's a whole lab on stratigraphy and biostratigraphy and lithostratigraphic correlations and all that stuff. But for now, this is kind of a taste of what we'll be doing. So certainly having fossils can help us determine the ages or at least the sequence of rocks across wide regions, even though they're separated by, uh, in this case, 250 miles, we can sort of combine them now, right? Correlate them and get a more accurate picture. Well, the final part of the lab deals with absolute or numerical time dating. And I have some background information here, and I do discuss quite a bit of this in the lectures, my video lectures. So review this information, review my video lectures. And then the key to uh, this lab is really filling out this data table, right? Because we got some, some parent-daughter ratios here, some fraction of parent remaining, the number of, of half-lives elapsed. That's an important, that's a key feature. We, we need to figure that out because we can multiply the number of half-lives elapsed times basically the half-life. You can think of this almost as a decay constant, right? And so that'll give us age. So the half-life of the system, which would be these numbers up here times how many half-lives have elapsed. And so this kind of does it for you, uh, or at least it solves this, um, uh, this equation here by determining the fraction of parent remaining. 
And now you can answer these questions. For example, let me just pick, let's pick letter C here. We'll do this one together. If the fraction of original potassium-40 remaining is 0.979, so that's the fraction up here, 0.979, we're looking at right here, uh, what is the age? So we see right away that it's a parent-daughter ratio of 46.62, but here it's going to be, uh, so the age is going to be that this, this um, half-life for potassium-40, which we can get up here, which is 1,300 million years. So we'll say 1,300 million years times this point zero three one. Zero point zero three one. And if we do that, let's do that real quick here on the calculator. So we'll say uh, 1,300 times point zero three one. So the age is 40.3 million years. So it's 40.3 MA. Remember, MA stands for millions of years ago, millions of years from today, right? Uh, back in time. Now, here, we're going to go back to our timelines over here. So, so here we're going back to figure 12, right? So we're going to look at, we're going to try to figure out the age of F, A, and E. So that's what we refer to. So F, A, and E. And so just follow these rules, just like I, we did on the previous, and you can get the answers you need off of this figure here, right? And I think the rest of it should be pretty straightforward. Um, it's just a little bit of math. And again, I do talk about this in my video lecture. You should be able to complete this um, as we go.